At the start of the year, I got a book deal for a monograph about board games as tools for understanding systems. Now, me being me, I draw a lot of connections to other art forms, including film. And there was a long section discussing Peter Watkins, his films, and his writing. It runs about 2,500 words. And I get it back from the editor, and he says, This goes on a little long before it gets back to games. And he was right. So I cut the section down to under 1,000 words, which also means I had to cut a footnote that I thought was pretty interesting, so this is me telling you about it. Watkins makes very political films, very critical of mass media, explicitly anti-capitalist and anti-war, and in discussing his work, I brought up that Truffaut quote about war films. You know the one, it's impossible to make an anti-war film because... Wait, how did it go again? So I look it up, so I can make sure I'm quoting it correctly, and so I can reference it in a footnote. And what I found out is, he never said it. Roger Ebert just kinda made it up. Or to be more charitable, Truffaut says something kind of adjacent to it, and Ebert misremembered it, except he misremembered it differently every time. So, November 11th, 1973, Chicago Tribune publishes an article by Gene Siskel, The Touch That Transcends Violence and Death, an interview with Truffaut around the time Day for Night is coming out. Siskel, there's very little killing in your films, how come? Truffaut, I find that violence is very ambiguous in movies. For example, some films claim to be anti-war, but I don't think I've ever seen an anti-war film. Every film about war ends up being pro-war. Siskel, even a film like Kubrick's Paths of Glory or his Doctor Strangelove? Truffaut, yes. I think Kubrick likes violence very much. And this gets paraphrased by Roger Ebert over the years. For example, it's not possible to make an anti-war movie because war movies, with their energy and sense of adventure, end up making combat look fun. 1986. It is impossible to make an anti-war film because films tend to make war look exciting. 1997. It is impossible to make an anti-war movie because action argues in favor of itself. 2005. The paraphrase isn't necessarily inaccurate to Truffaut's opinion. It's interesting that it makes it more absolute. I haven't seen as less forceful than it is impossible. And it's interesting that the reason why it's impossible changes each time, becoming more of an argument. And that's because Ebert only makes a new version of this quote so that he can argue with it. Every time it appears, it's when discussing an anti-war film, and it's followed by, Truffaut is right, but this one is an exception. In fact, the 2005 version, where action argues in favor of itself, Ebert is talking about passive glory and says, well, when Truffaut said that, he must not have been thinking about passive glory. And like, are you sure? Because that was the very next thing he was asked about. It's impossible to make an anti-war film isn't a quote. It's a rhetorical device. It's a straw man. And like, I'm not casting stones here. That's exactly how I was using it in discussing Watkins. That's how everyone uses it, because on his face, it's just wrong. Like Truffaut, my man, you saw Dr. Strangelove, and you thought it was pro-war. Maybe this is a hot take, but Francois, I don't want to watch peasants eating with their hands Truffaut, was a bougie little twerp with some shit opinions. All quotations, especially popular ones, are rhetorical devices, often paraphrased or decontextualized to frame or support a point or argument. Like, maybe you've heard that Vonnegut quote about the custard pie. During the Vietnam War, which lasted longer than any war we've ever been in, and which we lost, every respectable artist in the country was against the war. It was like a laser beam. We were all aimed in the same direction. The power of this weapon turns out to be that of a custard pie, dropped from a stepladder six feet high. And you've heard this quote used to argue that satire and political art is self-important, highfalutin posturing. It doesn't change anything. But if you put it back into context, Vonnegut is saying it doesn't change anything because of television. Because corporate-owned media determines which voices get heard and which get hand-waved away. This was in 2003, in the lead-up to the Iraq War, and much of the interview is about the effect of television, cults of personality, and control of narrative and attention. Asked if satire could actually change things, Vonnegut said, I guess it works some. But, he went on to say, George Bush has hydrogen bombs if he needs them. It really matters who's around, and who's holding attention. I don't think television will let anybody else hold attention. The interviewer asks him why, and then he says the quote, This laser beam, all aimed in one direction, turned out to be a custard pie. Remove this context, and it's no longer about mass audiovisual media and the manufacture of consent. 
is about how it's foolish to protest or agitate, about how it's impossible to make an anti-war film. Does this count as a video essay? I don't know. I'm going to thank my Patreon producers anyway. Next one is about games as toys and is in production.